We've got our site set up and we're ready to kind of go. But before we do, I've got one thing I want to talk about. Now, I've got a rule. My rule is if I'm working in a program, I don't just throw something at you and say, oh, don't worry about that. What I want to do is stop before we get into images and talk about one of the most, in my opinion, important aspects of web design, and that's page structure. Now, a lot of us out there, myself included, began doing page structure with things like tables. But I want to tell you something. After you get into HTML5, CSS, div statements, you'll never go back to tables again. Sounds like an arrogant statement. I understand that, but it's true. Page structure using CSS with divs and HTML5 is just absolutely unbelievable. It puts together a rock-solid foundation for your website. So what we're going to do is I'll talk about it here in this little presentation, and then in the next lesson, we will set up a page that will allow us to insert some images, and then we'll talk about working with images. Don't forget, technical information is about to be disseminated, so please stay alert at all times. Page Structure 101. Structure in HTML5 with CSS has naming conventions, okay? Naming, nomenclature, whatever you want to call it. So we'll be working with certain tags, and they are the header. You have one called heading, that's H1 to H6. Paragraph, navigation, and aside, article, section, footer, and figure. Now, these names were created for these tags to help define that particular area you're working in. But to be honest with you, you could take a footer and make it a header, and it would still be called footer. The idea to give them these names is to help interpret them when you're using them. And I'm not suggesting you use a footer as a header, but all it really is is a name designation to get you started on formatting. Now, when we start putting this together, okay, we put it all together, basically it's going to look like this in the next lesson. I'll create a div for a header. I'll do one for a, another new section, another one for an article, another one for an article, another one for an article, a footer. And it's going to look just like that. But in reality, when we put it together, it looks something more like this, or it will. Start with the header tag. Section tag is nested inside of the header. The articles are nested inside of the section. And then the content is in the new footer tag. Now, it looks something like this in code. Notice how this works. First off, look at the body tags, the beginning and the end. We open and close a tag. We close a tag with a forward slash and then usually the same word. Everything is inside the body. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means if I use CSS to control what the body does, like say, I want all text in body to be blue, then the header, the sections, the articles, and the footer will all have blue text because the body is like the parent, and everything else underneath it is the children, and the children follow along with what the parent says. I don't know if that's really true, because it never happened to me. I never followed my parents, but uh, <clears throat> I respected them. But the body is controlling it. Now look at the next one. That's one of our tags, header. Content for new header tag goes here, but notice inside of that is section and articles. So if I decide to do body as blue, all the text is going to go blue. But since I now have this other section, I can say for header, which goes from the top to the other one down in the bottom, make that black. And then even though everything else, including the footer, would be blue, because the footer's outside of header, the text inside header would be black because I changed it. Next one down, of course, is sections. And in sections, basically the same thing holds true. I could do specific formatting to sections. I could do specific formatting to articles. As long as they have an opening and closing tag, I can define them and I can use them. Now, the final one is footer. Now, footer is outside of the header area, but it's still inside the body. Think of it just like a parent and their children. As long as it's nested in, it's controlled by the parent, unless you say something else. Now, when this first came out years ago, it took me a while to get my head around exactly how it works. But once I got into it, it's actually pretty easy and very logical. So we're going to start with something like, say, this, where we put in all these tags. They're going to look just like this. Every time we do one, it'll just stick it right up there like this because they're unformatted. And we're going to change what this looks like here to something like this with a few commands. What we're talking about is rock-solid page structure using HTML5 using CSS and div tags. And even though this is a chapter on images, this is where we're going to start. We're going to start building our structure.
Now let's get going. 